are under my spell. When I click my fingers, you will make me a bacon sandwich, and you will run off, get ten of your girlfriends, fifteen root vegetables, and a big tub of... What? Ah! Hey! Good evening, welcome to Games Master. Today on the show... Oh, we have got a treat for you. We have got light entertainment legend. Don't look too closely in his eyes, because he's a hypnotist, Mr. Paul McKenna, on the show. But we kick off tonight with an event that we like to call Some Brothers Do Have It. I have always felt that Sonic's reputation as a bit of a softie was a little unfair. After all, you can't have that many pricks and be a complete wimp. Sonic Fighting Champions formed the basis for today's event, which is a rather simple best of five round match between Sonic and his one-time pal, Tails. I've gathered two teams of three people to compete in the challenge. Each person will play one round before passing on to a teammate. Team members will be relying on each other, so let's hope no one lets the side down. Okay, all the six of our contestants for this are West Ham fans, so if they've got a home game tonight, that's half the crowd gone. Please welcome uh, the Gordons and the McCormacks. <laughs> You come and stand there, we Cal. Yeah. Right, Lewis, Craig, welcome to the show, we Dino. Now, first of all, Daniel Gordon, tell us a bit about yourself and your brothers. Yeah, well, we were like, like football and playing computer games like Richard Fire. He likes all the comics and the X-Men and stuff. Yep. Yeah. He just like, likes the computers and mucking kind about. Of Who is going to be the weakest one in your family? It's a kind of family against family. Who are you worried about? <sighs> <laughs> You're worried about Daryl, yeah. right? Is he the worst games player out of you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you feel about that, Daryl? He, he's the worst. I'm the best. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, you're already fighting amongst yourselves. It's, it's a good start. Okay, let's move on to McCall. Max Lewis, tell us a bit about yourself and your brothers. Well, uh, I'm Lewis. This is Craig and this is Dean. We all support West Ham. Mm -hmm. um, Craig likes food. <laughs> <laughs> Dean likes his girl in his class called Grace Wallace. <laughs> Do you? What's, what's nice? What do you like about Grace? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. It's just one of those loves like that. It just comes inside your head and you can't really explain it. Would you like to go out on a date with Grace? No. No, you wouldn't? You don't like her at all? Yeah, no. but um, I just wouldn't want to go. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go with her? You want to wait. You want to leave her a couple of years, softly, softly catch your monkey, take it from me, Dean. That's the best way to go. <laughs> Okay then. Right, best of luck, Gam. Now, while we get sorted out for this sibling situation, we'll take a look at today's news. Scud Race is the latest arcade driving game from Sega, and it comes with the usual options for different tracks and cars, but more importantly, it's the first title since Virtua Fighter 3 to feature Sega's Model 3 technology. Look out for it in arcades later on in the year, although Sega have assured us they'll be giving it a new name for its British release, just as well, really. <laughs> Mars Attacks is the new movie from Maverick director Tim Burton. Starring Jack Nicholson, Danny DeVito and a host of other big names, the film is to Independence Day what The Simpsons is to EastEnders. I've seen it. Do so yourself, because it's fab. Out on February 28th. Recently launched in the US is the latest add-on for the Saturn, Netlink. This 200 buck box allows you to connect to the internet and fritter away your life browsing web pages, sending email to the other X-Files anoraks, or best of all, playing special network versions of classic games like Sega Rally. It's currently only available in Japan and America, and whether it's released over here remains to be seen. Welcome back. Sonic the Hedgehog he used to be a cute, cuddly little platform character, but uh, years of excess and moral decay have reduced him into an ultra-violent beat-em-up. We have got the brothers McCormack and the brothers Gordon doing battle on it. Kirk, we had little Dino there tell us about his, uh, his, his first love there, Grace Wallace. Who was the first love of your life? Well, Doctor, it was actually your mum, uh, which, uh, in fact, reminds me I have something to tell you. <laughs> Okay, and uh, how about some tips for uh, the wee guys? Okay, first tip is, 
beat seven shades of sushi out your mates. That is the first tip. Second tip is when they're in the air, it's quite good to come in again, like before they actually come back down, go straight in with another couple of punches. That's a good thing. And thirdly, uh, just sort of use these uh, protective shields that you've got. Make sure that you use them because they're there and it's pointless not using them at all. Okay, thank you very much, Kirk. Okay, whichever set of brothers wins three rounds first will win the golden joystick. We have got the two oldest, uh, Lewis and Daniel up first. As soon as they finish around, they will swap over to their younger siblings. Best of luck, off you go. Okay, throughout the challenge, the McCormacks will be playing as Sonic on the left. The Gordons will be playing as Tails. He's the orange guy, Sonic is the blue guy. It's Lewis against Daniel. At the top of the screen, you can see the energy bars for each character. And a great, fantastic, fast kick and start by Tails there. That's the Gordons, are making a good start, Kirk. Yep, Daniel came in, he's doing some high kicks on Sonic, so he's going to have a bit of trouble there right away. Now, once again, oh. It's quite equal now though, but there. Tails is Tails is in the lead now. That's a great, fantastic piece of play. But again, Sonic comes back there. Oh, oh, no, 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 Tails no, no, no. Is That's it, dude. It's so 1-0. Sonic won that one. 1-0 one to the McCormacks. So Lewis and Daniel are gonna swap right for Craig and Daryl. Off they go. Okay, Craig is Sonic in the blue, Daryl is Tails in the orange. A good start there by Tails, the Sonic's come back again, sir. Right back in these rings you can see spinning are actually the amount of damage that's being caused by the players onto each other. So that's a good indicator of what's going on at the moment. It's a frantic free brawl just now. Tails is energy down low. That's Daryl. The Gordons don't really want to lose another one here, oh. but they have. It's 2-0 to the McCormacks. Now we have the youngest. We Dean and we Kyle. Dean is playing Sonic in the blue, Kyle Tails in the orange. Now Kyle must win this. The little orange fella must beat the blue guy, Kirk. Sonic right back in there with a couple of high kicks at the start and it's looking like he's inflicted some damage in his boxy little pal. But Tail got a good pin there before that's another nice oh. high uppercut. So Sonic was a bit stunned. Using, using the, the shield. shield. Yes. yes, using the shield very well there, Kirk. We were at, we were this one there. Yes. Okay, but Tails' energy is low. This could be a, a, a whitewash. No, it's not! Tails is coming back, the Gordons, there's some fight in them at last! It's 2-1 there! Okay, we move back on to the oldest two. Lewis has Sonic in the blue, Daniel Gordon has Tails oh, in fantastic. the orange. A fantastic start there, Kirk. Yep, that was a little spill throttle there, and no, absolutely no doubt about it, straight in. I'd like to see them using some of these double-handed slaps that both the characters can do. That can really inflict a lot of damage. That would be nice. Remember that the Gordons still need to win this one. The McCormick's oh. just won away, but they've done it! Oh. They've tied it to a piece there! Fantastic display from Daniel. Now it's tied for Craig against Daryl. Daniel said Daryl was the weak link in the Gordons here. This is the third and final deciding bout here, Kirk. Yep, he knocked him over. He tried to do a big leap on top of him there. Just missed him and ended up banging his own head on the floor. Okay, if we look at the energy bars, Tails is low. That's the Gordons one. It's very Oh, the and they've done it in the fifth and final bout then. Young Craig McCormack seals it. Yes! <laughs> okay, guys, come over here. Okay, uh, commiserations to the gods. Congratulations to the McCormacks. Okay, guys, so with the first two bouts, then that was uh, uh, Lewis. Lewis won his one, Craig won his one. It was 2-0. And then, Kyle, you stepped in and restored some pride to the Gordons. What were your tactics then in that, in that fight of yours? I left the, my normal thing. Your normal thing? Yeah. So you usually go around the punching blue hedgehogs? Yeah. <laughs> Generally, for a laugh. That's, uh, that's all right. Okay, so then uh, that was 2-1. That was I would have liked to draw attention to you, Craig, because you won both of your bouts. How did you do that? How was that? That I just... You're just cool, technique. aren't you? Yeah, yeah, just cool. You're just, you're just a bit groovy? Yeah. Yeah? Is that a fair assumption? Simple, yeah. And finally, yeah. Dean. Now, A, you lost your fight. You got beaten by Kyle, so I can forget about Grace Wallace now. <laughs> That's out the window. But I know that, obviously, you think I'm a very, very funny guy, but you think you can help me out with that? You've got a wee joke of your own, don't you? Do you want to tell us the joke? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what bear needs deodorant? I don't know. What bear needs deodorant? Pooh bear. Pooh bear! Fantastic, Dean. Thank you very much. That has been the highlight of this series so far. Okay, then. Thank you very much indeed to the Gordons, but special thanks for today's Gordon Games Master Joystick winners, the McCormacks. <laughs> And 
And the while little Dino and I sit down and write the remainder of this series of Games Master, we'll go to today's reviews. <laughs> First up on the PlayStation Jet Moto, which is Japanese for wear leathers which are colour coordinated with your bike. One special feature is the magnetic grapple. You can hook onto certain poles and spin around corners at amazingly high speeds. In one player mode, you have 10 different tracks to race around with 20 opponents at once. Firstly, it's got split screen mode. Now, we haven't seen an awful lot of that even on the best of the driving games like Wipeout 2097. And the graphics are incredibly well defined. Ah, it's, a, it's an awesome game and I'm telling you, it's going to be the next biggest PlayStation release. With Twisted Metal 2, it seems that even a Pishkim can get a sequel. Twisted Metal Tour is the sequel to Twisted Metal. Very, very similar in that you pick a ridiculous car with very, very big weapons and you drive around one of the interesting scenarios destroying your opponent. Yes, I'm afraid it is a little tad boring. Certainly when all you get to do is drive around a bit and shoot each other. It looks really great, but it just doesn't have the sustaining gameplay I think a game like this would need. And if you're scared of Rick's campness, you can run away and hide on the Games Master webpage. There's details of lots of stuff. OK, coming up in the second half of the show, Paul McKenna is our special guest. Or is he? Technically, he could just be making me think that he is. And any minute now, I'll take all my clothes off and start clucking like a chicken. Ponder the moral ramifications of this act during this commercial break. <laughs> Master, I'd just like to say that that last advert that was on in the break was the best advert I've ever done saw. And in fact, I would like to dedicate Games Master Celebrity Challenge like, to that ad. My next challenge is on the formidable new Nintendo 64 game, Lost Loser. A juggernaut carrying a nuclear weapon heading through a built-up area. My contestant's task will be to destroy any buildings in this park before it crashes into them, detonating the bomb. They'll use various methods of transport to complete this challenge. First, a train, and then a buggy, which must be used to destroy the buildings by constant ramming. One the tip my contestant, use the hill at the side of the complex to launch yourself and destroy buildings more quickly. That's my briefing over. It's a tough challenge, but somebody's got to do it. So, please welcome tonight's special guest, television's premier hypnotic light entertainer, Mr. Paul McKenna. Welcome to the show, sir. Dominic. Now, uh, Mr. McKenna, I'm sure we have a lot of people watching themselves would like to be hypnotists. What, uh, how do you become a hypnotist? Well, the way I did it was went and found one of those dusty old books, you know, the leather-bound types, opened uh -huh. it, read all the old ancient secrets and just went out and practiced it. It's like anything in life, if you practice it, you can get better at it. Apart from presenting this show, because it's taken me five series and I'm still woefully but inept. Keep at it, though. Thank you very much. That's advice from our light entertainment legend there. <laughs> Um, now, you've also, you, you've also got the, the tapes that you do that, that people listen to themselves, which can uh, help them to sleep, help them to lose weight and stuff like that. Is there one which could help me get more hair? Well, if there was, I would have used it as well, being a little follically challenged. Very, very good point. Although you actually try to grow it a bit longer. I, I suspect you may be trying to flatten it down now again, Paul. Well, yeah, I'd be on to a full Bobby Charlton. I'll, <laughs> I'll be combing it up from me back in a few years. <laughs> it's been a few years. I can see it stuck down a little bit. Yeah. No, just, that's just a joke. Fine head of hair, fine head of hair. Because I can't talk about hair. Now, um, we've, uh, we've made you promise yeah. that you're not going to hypnotise me. Well, after what you just said about my hair, actually, I'm not so sure if I... No, of course, no, I, I won't... Because I am worried about stuff, so you promise. Ab yeah, yeah. Definitely not going to hypnotise me, that's fine. And finally, the, uh, the challenge itself, you've had a couple of practice goes at it. How confident do you feel? 
very unconfident. I'm terrible. I, I, I've never played this kind of game before. Uh -huh. I've only ever played the arcade ones, you know, the, the shoot 'em ups and the racer ones, but not this kind of game. Right. And you notice, I don't know if you noticed, when he was saying that, I was trying not to look directly into Mr. McKenna's eyes just in case yeah. there, okay? <laughs> so listen, uh, best of luck with it. The girls will guide you into the game playing position. Okay. And uh, I'll go up to the cool commentary box. Okay, once again, and making me look particularly good in the fashion stakes is uh, Rick Henderson. Uh, Rick, have you ever been hypnotised? Well, I've been regressed back to a five-year-old once, and I don't think I've ever actually recovered. Right. Good gag, though. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have you got any tips from Mr. McKenna on this game? What's, what's going to be the crucial tip you could give him? Well, this is an extraordinarily tough game. This game is so hard, it's uncanny, but... It's the mastery so of the... It's uncanny. <laughs> yeah, it's the mastery okay. of the turbo button, mm -hmm. in this case. Um, if you want to turn quicker and when you get in the buggy, you have to tap lightly on the turbo button. If you want to slam into the buildings to break them down, turbo it all the way. OK, thank you, Rick. Right, Mr McKenna has to bash down everything in order for the troop carrier to be able to get from A to B unimpeded. Unimpeded? That's correct. That's, That's brilliant nice. pronunciation as well. Best of luck, Mr McKenna. Thank you. Off you go. Okay, on the screen in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see a radar. The red dot is the troop carrier making its way from A to B. The blue dot is the building closest to it that it's going to knock into. There's an arrow on the screen there as well. That's pointing towards the first building Mr. McKenna has to destroy. He's in a train just now. Why, Rick? That was just a vessel, like the Dolan's Light Railway to Buggiesville. Okay. He's now got to get into the buggy, and as soon as he's in the buggy, he can start driving round to the buildings to blow them up. Okay, he was wearing a very nice pair of green pants there, the wee guy, worth pointing out. Okay, he's in the buggy now, Rick. Uh, yeah, the buggy, he's taken the short route, the shortest route, under the bridge. He now has to turbo off this cliff. Hitting the cliff itself would cost him an awful lot of time. OK, well, he's safely over that hump there. And there's the little troop carrier. Now, you can see the arrows on the screen. That's the bits of building he has to destroy. We're getting a warning sign. That means that the troop carrier is close. This first building is the first imminent danger. He has to destroy this first. It's like Tony Adams in a neighbour's garden. <laughs> OK, I think, has he destroyed it enough for it? There's still a little bit left uh, of it. a little bit. I think he might just clip the side of the rest no, no, of the building. Yeah, the arrow's on the next building now. Okay, presumably the longer kind of run up he's got, the more damage he's going to take off of it. Right, the best way, is, best way to actually get these pylons is to drive up the bank and turbo off the bank straight into them. Okay, we're getting a collision imminent thing. I think so. I think he might have just got that. No collision imminent, it's still there. We can't see his trip caliber, but we're and it could be just about to bang into something. He's That's got good. that huge beat. There's a pylon behind him, pylon. a pylon behind him. He's going to get that. That's gone. his own trip carrier not advisable and that means Mr McKenna's challenge ends in failure well I think you relish that word failed just a little too much Dominic it does trip more easily off the tongue than triumph Mr McKenna basically you drove your car into your own troop carrier now that basically makes it one of the most appalling displays of gameplay I've ever seen on you, the show. You think it was that bad? I thought it was absolutely atrocious. You're sure? I have never seen a display of games playing worse than that. <laughs> it was so brilliant. Thank you. You cope with it admirably. I mean, was it d difficult for you at all? You natural seemed to talent. through it. Yeah, just, you know, natural talent, really. Are you good at a lot of games? Yeah, of course. You know, I'm uh, considered one of the best in the world. And, oh, by the way, can I have that 20 quid you owe me as well? Yeah. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, thanks very much, oh, mate. Geez. Well, I mean, I am just in awe of your sheer games playing brilliance. And to celebrate this fight, one of the most fantastic celebrities we've ever had on the show, the Games Master Golden Joystick goes to Mr. Paul McKenna. <laughs> Once more, I have been ripped from Britain's heaving bosom to go across to the other end of the world for a feature. This next short piece of film amply displays the results. It's cold, it's overcast, it's wet, but I'm still wearing shades because we're in Los Angeles at the Jurassic Park ride. Technically the most advanced ride in the history of the world. Oh yes, if you want top theme park action, you've got to come to Universal Studios, especially if Channel 4 are paying for you. Jurassic Park has been packing them in all summer, just as well for Universal, because they spent over three years on a whopping 110 million bucks to recreate the world of the dinosaurs. The ride is rounded off by the biggest water drop ever, which seems to have a devastating effect on the vocabulary of the punters. Oh wow, I, I, 
was uh, the most awesome ride I've ever been on. Before getting all awesome up myself, I went along to speak to the producer of the ride, Phil Hitena, who also plays Dr. Mark Green in ER. Okay, so Phil, take us through step by step how you go about building a ride like this. Well, it really begins first and foremost with the story we want to tell. We figure out what, what the experiences we want to create, and then we start taking that step by step. What are the things that we could do that would, would make that happen? We, we create a plan, we do a lot of models, um, get a lot of crazy people in one room all together and throw out ideas and then start working with engineers to see what's possible. And once we kind of get a rough idea of that, we literally start doing mock-ups of the different elements. Um, we'll build them sometime at scale, sometimes full size. In fact, the drop here was built full size in the Netherlands where our ride system was constructed. And we went over and climbed up a high stair tower and took a boat with a crane, dropped it on the top of the scaffold and pushed it off the edge. I rode it um, <laughs> just to make sure it would feel the way we wanted to. So obviously you've got to test these things to make sure they're safe and everything like that. Is that where the computers come in? I mean, do you kind of have to test it out like that, first of all? We use computer simulation for all kinds of things, both safety, um, basic engineering things, and, and then computers are a very key part of just mocking up the story elements. We use computer animated storyboards just to make sure we understand from the audience's point of view what it's going to look like. So have you ever lost anyone on the ride? Uh, as long as we keep the dinosaurs well fed, we haven't uh, had any problems with this. And so it was time for me to cheat death once again. But there was a slight fashion problem to clean up first. Hi, hi, Punch. Poncho girl, what's, what's the story here? What's this for? It's an emergency poncho and it's so you won't get wet. Right. You don't have them in black, do you? No black. I can't wear yellow. The fashion police will arrest me in Britain. I don't think so. You look handsome. I, I don't need them. I won't get wet. Okay, I'm have fun. Alas, it seemed my fellow punters had no understanding of the true meaning of cool. It's Attack of the Killer Mutant Yellow Poncho, people! <laughs> I'm not going to get wet at all. Welcome to Jurassic Park. First bit of dinosaur action over there. You see that wee guy? Ah! It just gobbed on me! It's not gobbing on me! It's like being a Millwall football match! It's, uh, it's very dark now, but I'm still wearing shades, so I can't see a thing! Oh no, something's gonna happen here. I think this is the big drop! Oh no! Ah, oh, big dinosaur! Tonight, I would like to thank Mr. Paul McKenna again, not only for coming on the show, but also being such a fantastic games player. And uh, while you think about that, I'll leave you with another thought. If the family is the centre of 20th century culture, why do mine keep moving house without telling me? Good night. <laughs>